And when someone says a particular theory is a phenomenological theory, like what I mean, what am I, what do I mean by this word? Mm. You could say uh, uh, gas laws are that you study in chemistry is a phenomenological uh, laws or phenomenological theory. What do we mean? Because, uh, based on experiment, we see some phenomena, and then we try to come up with some theory to explain it. Yeah. You, you start out with the experiment, and you come up with some model, any model, to fit to that theory. And this would be a kind of a phenomenological description of a refraction of light. You see the light refracting. And you think, hey, if the speed of light was different here, I don't know if it is, but if it were, that would explain it. So based on that, you can um, sort of assign a phenomenological constant or quantity. And how many here heard the phrase index over refraction? Like that everyone has heard of, right? That's what index over refraction is. It's an experimentally determined quantity and the way that index of refraction is defined, um, index of refraction, we usually use the letter N for it. Don't ask me why. Um, it's defined as the speed of light in vacuum, C, divided by speed of light in whatever medium that is. So, these two quantities are the ones that go together. This V is some kind of property of the medium, speed of light in the medium. And this index of refraction is essentially a way of expressing the exact same information. You could say based on what we wrote down here, the speed of light in a medium is its speed of light in vacuum divided by index of refraction. So all of this is just a phenomenological description. As in, um, we don't, we have no way of describing, we have, um, not no way. We don't have, I guess the uh, opposite to phenomenological is um, the, or the counterpart to phenomenological theory is something that you might describe as uh, first principles. In fact, almost everything you did in physics 4A is that. As in, you start out with the Newton's law, that's your basic fundamental law, and you build everything on that without introducing any more assumptions. Uh, or a lot of mechanics is that, except when you start measuring friction coefficient and things like that, <laughs> then it's a phenomenological again. Uh, this is what a lot of engineers do. This is what a lot of theoretical physicists like to do. <laughs> and what we can say is that based on what we covered in the last hour, we can actually give a little bit of flair of how to describe this uh, different speed of light in a medium um, in terms of something that's more fundamental. As in, you know, imagine, as I said, imagine, uh, imagine you have an annoying younger sibling who keeps asking you why. So you tell, you tell your younger sibling that light bends as it enters a, a different medium because the speed of light is different there. In fact, I can even tell you that this is how they are different. This is the speed of light in the medium, C divided by N. Anybody here know what the value of N is for water? Once you know it's an easy number to memorize, N of water is approximately 1.33. You can put one more three there, but that's already three significant figures. So after you've given all that, imagine that your younger sibling once again asks you, why? Why is the index of refraction of water 1.33? This is where we can look at this to have a bit of a more conceptual basis. That's not simply saying this is true because we know it to be true. Why is it true? Because it's true. <laughs> like you're not explaining anything. You're just insisting that, 
in science, that's a, sometimes how it works. You do the experiment, so you know what the correct result is, even when you don't understand why. But with this theory, here's how we can describe it. Um, when I say the names of these constants, I never say permittivity and permeability. I always say permi uh, permittivity of free space, permeability of free space. Why? Why, am I, why do I keep adding free space? Do I like free stuff that much? <laughs> I mean, I do, but what does free space mean? Vacuum. Yeah, vacuum. These are constants that are specifically associated with vacuum. This is the electric constant for, this is the dielectric constant of vacuum. This is the magnetic constant of vacuum. Water is a dielectric. So water has a different dielectric constant than air does. So what you can do is you can build an expression that's similar to this, but for uh, light in water. So you could say this is speed of light in some material is equal to one over square root of whatever that dielectric constant is and whatever that magnetic constant for the material is. It's often equal to mu naught. It's usually the electric constant that changes a lot. So, so this is the more fundamental connection. I mean, not that your annoying younger sibling would understand it, but you can, once you make this connection, then you can actually design an experiment that would confirm for you that that is why the speed of light in water is different. You can maybe do an electric experiment, and you will see that the amount to the dielectric constant is different by actually matches it. In practice, it gets a little bit complicated because this is a function of frequency. Light is a very high frequency uh, electromagnetic wave. And when you do electrostatic experiment, the result in this, but, you know, that's a complication. You will deal with it when you're actually doing physics research. But this is at least a starting point. You can connect to something that, uh, something that you knew almost intuitively, something that you just uh, took on faith to something that's more theoretically grounded.